My name is Juliana Letara. I'm the head of the Department of Urban Planning, Kinodoni Municipal Council. My name is Osili Glosai. I am Tandale Ward Executive Officer. Uh, yes. And what do you both do? Mm -hmm. How do you plan? Mm, to me, what we do at the office, I head the uh, land sector sections, which are urban planning, survey, valuation, and uh, land management. And in order to plan, to do urban planning, we need maps. And we really need up-to-date maps. The up-to-date maps are our tools because through them we produce base maps which we will help us to identify the different opportunities within the area, also to identify challenges which we have to address within the community. Uh, me, me as a ward executive officer, I have a lot of work I'm doing there in Tandale, including uh, to, to see Tandale in a good way, in a planned way. So as a, as a head of, of, of the ward, the main, the main thing I do in the, to, to, to make sure that Tandale is planned is to, is to collaborate with the Department of Planning to see how we can how we can develop Tandale in a new structure, because we need to see Tandale. Uh, Tandale, first of all, Tandale is an unplanned settlement. Uh, hygiene situation is not good, so we need to to set a new plan, a new program uh, for the new Tandale, uh, because we want to see the drainage system, we want to see the new infrastructure of road, we need to see the open spaces. Uh, as myself, I see Tandale is, is a forgotten place, so we need to, to do something. We need to have a special attention to develop or to, to improve the living standard of people of Tandale. So how are you two related? <laughs> the two of us are related in, when it comes to planning, designing, working with the community to address their issues at Tandale. Yeah, when we, when, when we talk about Tandale, we see that it's an unplanned area. It, it's, now not, it's now having a very poor development, but when we think about it in relation to its closeness to the city center, it, the, the land itself is a very, is a very va valuable it's very valuable land. So the value of land is very high, and at present what we are thinking is to do the redevelopment of the whole area, to work with the community, to talk, to, first of all, to, to talk to them, to educate them, and to let them see through the potential of that land, and that if it can be tapped, they will all have a better life, living standard. So how, before community mapping, what maps did you have available? Before community mapping, we, ha we had some base maps which were made in, in late 90s and early 2000s. So they are really outdated more than 10 years, 15 years ago. So to work on those, to work on those as base maps, it's very challenging because a lot of development happens. And to, to be able to, do, to work on, to, do, to use those as base maps, we need to go to the site and update them using a long, lots of time waste a lot of time to do that. And while, while we are updating, some more developments is taking place. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, frankly, I need more effort or to be cooperative with the Office of City Planning because without them, I can do, I can do nothing. 
they are the expertise to plan some areas. And in planning, we need a lot of things. We need maps. Tandale, we don't have a map. People build whatever they want in any place. They build in the areas where the floods are too, where, where when it rains, water are, are going there very fast. So me and the, my office and the office of city planning should collaborate in order to make the new plans and to, and to create some infrastructures which are friendly to the people of Tandale. What sort of collaboration do you mean? I mean talking about what it was like without community mapping, mm -hmm. how, how does the ward of Tandali work with Kinandoni? And could you explain a bit what those, you know, what ward and Kinandoni, you know, what they are? Before community mapping, it was very difficult to, 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 to educate the people of Tandale or to let them understand what we were talking about planning. But with community mapping, we go with them step by step. They see through, we talk to them, they see the problem, we, we, we identify the problem together with them and it becomes easier for them to, to understand. Even after having the maps on, on, on table, like, just like these ones, they will see where they belong, where, where the problems are, and where, where, do, where do we have open land for maybe putting like waste collection points and putting other services. So, Tandali is a ward. Yes. Kinandoni is a. Is a municipality. And what's the difference between those two? The municipality of Kinondoni have 34 wards. Okay. Yeah. And out of this, very few are, are fully planned. Yeah. Let me say something. Since you are coming, taking these pictures from drones and other machines. I see the flashes of the new Tandale because we have now a map and a map is something to start with. A map is something, is something to start with because we can identify different areas, we can identify a lot of, a lot of some areas to restructure and <coughs> to improve. So I really appreciate in 100% having this map. Because not only floods, you can identify the places, but even if when there is an outbreak of cholera, I can identify the places where the cholera, where there's an outbreak of cholera through this map. But previously, I cannot do it. I can identify some places where people are doing some business, illegal business through this and tell the police, go this way, this house, there is a problem, you see? So these are the advantages of having this map. So this is the, is, the, is, the, is the roadmap for us to set the new plans, to, 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 to organize ourselves, involving the community, telling them, and they, have to, they must have the sense of ownership that this is for them. That's the basic thing. Instead of us going that thing to have this map, they have to, they must have the sense of ownership. This is ours, so we have to join our force together with the government, with the team, which the team of, uh, which took these pictures, so that we can have a new plan for the year development. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned three things that I'd really like for us to discuss. Um, and, um, that would be the, uh, the uses of the map, especially the uh, cholera. Um, but also uh, the, the engagement of how you see this sort of going on in the future. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you're talking about making Tendali plan mm -hmm. and that relationship. Um, so could you just give a bit more uh, information about the, the cholera? Uh, uh, of course, the outbreak of cholera started uh, in some three or four, months, four, four weeks ago. And we have the, the, the patient in Tandale. So how can we identify them? We go to find them. 
If you find a house, this is the area where the outbreak of cholera is. If I go to the map, I can see. So I can direct you, go to the house number three, number 642, or number 300, you can find a patient there. Yeah. So you are using this map? Of course we are using and it is very, it is very helpful to me in my working place. Yeah, not only that, but uh, this map helped me to, to, to request the fund, the municipal director, because I already know the places where there is wet, the waiting place, so that we can build the, the, the drainage system. Yeah, and I have also called the subword, the subword uh, uh, chairman to come to my office and tell them the areas which are which are wet, so that we can join our force together and to do something. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, sort of going on from that, I mean, what are the most important issues to be addressed in community mapping? In community mapping, for us, because we are, we are from the local authorities, what we really address is to provide services to the community, to reach them at the grassroots level. Because for us, we work with them, and when, they, when, when we have a, a, a map like this one produced, it's easier, you have all, all the information at your fingertips. So you can do it even on, the, on your table, and then you go and represent it to them. But without a map, it's, very, it's a very long story to, to, to tell them where to put, how to do it. It, will, it. it becomes very difficult for them to understand. But the map is a simplified way of, of open data, where everybody can see and learn and uh, it's an easy way of communication, more especially to the people at the community level. Okay. Yeah. And, and for you in your position, what are the most important issues addressed by community mapping? Yeah. <clears throat> the most thing is that, as Mama said, the basic thing we want to improve the living standard of people because the area to be seems to be where. There is no, if you look, there is no roads. There is no feeder roads. There is no good plan for the household. So the best thing to do is to, is to plan uh, the settlement of Tandale to be good and to improve the, the living standard of people of Tandale. Yes. So what issues does the map help you address? Um, it can help me to address issues of social issues, uh, like uh, um, floods. Yeah, we can identify the area which can have more floods. We can identify areas where you can put uh, some some buildings, like schools. Yeah. What services? Um, what public services do you think will be improved now this data exists? Uh, I think in my working place, in Tandale, uh, we don't have a secondary school. So through this map, we can identify, we can identify the place where we can put the, the secondary school. Uh, yeah. But we can also improve accessibility within the area. Because accessibility opens lens, or open an area for development, so we can improve the accessibility. And through accessibility, when it is improved, then other services will come automatically, because we will in, you you will improve the water supply, you will improve the solid waste management, you will improve mm, you will improve the health condition of the area. So through opening up areas for, 
for transportation network, then it you will improve the a lot of things. You will also improve the rate uh, rate of of crimes in the area because if the area is accessible, then the crimes goes down. Yeah. In your opinion, um, what problems exist with the community mapping methods? What are the challenges that we have? The challenges of community mapping, maybe, is, what I can say is it takes time to every, to have everybody on board mm. because you have to let they have to understand so it's, so that they can join you to identify the area. But I think it's a good idea. It's a very good idea because it creates sense of ownership. Once they are on board, they will feel that this is our product, this is we made all, uh, with, with our own thinking together with this. So they will al always appreciate what is being in the, in the streets now. Do you feel like that? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do because uh, what I see here is exactly what is in, in the ground. And it's a really up-to-date map. So with this, I feel very empowered that now, I, if I want to work in Tandale, I'm working with the really existing situation, an up-to-date base map. Yeah. Yeah, the problem we are facing in this is to, yeah, to sensitize people. To sensitize people about this issue. Uh, because people do not know what is this, what for, why we are doing this. So to, to implant a new idea to them why we are doing this, sometimes it takes time, it is difficult, some people ignore you because of ignorance. But in the, in the, in the, in the running way, other people understand what we what we meaning what we mean and they, they collaborate with us and they support us like now people are supporting us a lot through this yeah. how important is official data compared to the community data uh, you know this official data it is better to transform to the community as they should know. Yeah, they should know that this de this data we have belongs to them. So if they know that it belongs to them, so it is easier for them to accept any changes which comes to them. Mm. Official data and community data have to go together. Because if you have community data and you, you merge together with the community data, and that way people at the community will accept it more than when you have your official and say, this is my official data. So there are a few tensions with the official data. Yes. <laughs> OK. So in your professional opinions, is this data authoritative? In my Professional opinion, yes, because this is really data. This is really data. This is the base map. The, the, this is the, I don't know, the, the recent base map ever for this area. So I think this is really official. And because it belongs to the community. And the... Mm. Whenever you want to succeed in the community, like us, we are local, local authority. We work with the community. You have to work with the, the community at the grassroots level. And they have to understand you. They have to appreciate you. And they, they have to be really on board with you while planning for them. And this is what will take them there. Yeah. Even myself, I can say that this is the real picture of of Tandale. So it should get all the blessing from the government or any other authority because it shows, it is very precisely, it shows everything and it, it reflects it reflect the, the real picture of the area.
There is no any lying here. So I do think that the authorities which, which bless this to be used by, the, by anyone should, should, should do it immediately without questioning because it is the real, the real fact about the places where you take the pictures. Yeah, and it's gonna help us. Yeah. And maybe one point, without forgetting, if at all we can have all this map like this for the whole of Kinondoni, will be maybe 20 steps ahead. <laughs> That will really help us to reach each and every corner of Kinondoni and to start to, to, to fill the gap between, between the development of, of our residents and the, the work that we are, working at the, we are doing at the office. Because of our outdated maps, we are left very far behind. So with maps, with maps like this one, We'll try to run and find a way of filling the gap. So, you, very interesting. What is the next step? How, how does this get better? The, to, just to expand it, or how? What I can say, we need you more and more in this. Let you not end here, because. This is the beginning. You start with Tandale and other words, but we need to see you the whole, the whole council of Kinondone, because it is the place where we can do. This is the time for, to change other things, okay? And the way to change is to accept this and start in this. Yeah. As I pointed out before, we have thirty-four words, and out of thirty-four words. It's only about 30% of that land is planned. The rest is unplanned. It, some is like Tandale, and some is still have some, it's not as crowded as Tandale. So the, if you get a map for that, such a land, you will improve it, maybe to be just like a planned one. And with this also, with the mapping or with the improvement, the council will, will also be able to, to know where its citizens are, what are they doing, and to, will be able also to get some revenues from them, the revenue which we take back to them for the development of Kinondoni. Because what we, what we collect from the people is not is not for other use rather than for the development of Kinondon. So if we get if if we get maps of the of the other land, then everybody will start. Everybody who is a resident of Kinondoni will start contributing to the development of Kinondoni, and that is very important. How usable are the tools that you're using? You know, how complicated is it for? for people like yourselves to, to go out and start mapping? The tools that we are using. Mm. I mean, have you used them yourselves? Yeah, yeah we, are using, <laughs> we are using different tools and we are, using the, we are still using the outdated base maps because those are the, are the base. We, we, we can't go anywhere without a base map. So by using that and we used to to improve them maybe sometimes using the Google map. And the Google map, they, are not, they don't give you the three dimension measures. They don't give you the, the, coordinate, the coordinates, coordination data, coordinated data. So with that data, sometimes when you go and do the survey, it will create a big error. To, uh, sometimes it dislocates the area completely. And that is one of the challenges that we really faced here. What I can say, we are using the outdated technology. We need to have this new technology to invent to our areas so that we can have the land which is very precisely and clear, like mm -hmm. what you did. Mm -hmm. So 
So I would like to, to, to advise the council to put more effort to buy this modern machine because we need to see the modern Kinondoni as I see the modern Tandali. What sort of modern machines would you like to see? I, do, I would like to see the drones. I would like to see those, those machines like Bazooka and the Bajaji. Yeah, I think I'm going to trim, call it trim, or oh, what? Trimble, yes, it is called Trimble, yeah. Okay. You, in the past, we used to have aero photos, which are taken by aeroplane, aeroplanes. And it, in order to be, to, to be able to do that, you need to have a, a clear sky without any clouds. So all the time when they come, they say, ah, it's too cloudy, we can't see, it can't work. But with drones, it's just like that. <laughs> you get the information. You don't have to go to the, to the clouds. So you, you want to see it across all of Kinandoni. Mm -hmm. But you think that it's going to take a, a long time and a lot of resource. Do you think there are different ways to do it? To get the maps instead of using community mapping? I, myself, what I see is that this, this map took a short time period to take it and to, to create the way it is. <coughs> so we don't need to spend more time because we have already know that there are tools which can use a short of time. So let us invest in those tools. After having that, we will map the whole Kinondon. That the four words to map with drones is to take only three months. I think it's finished. Yeah. And we will use those drones even to when it comes the rain, we need to know the, the flooding zone, how the flood affect the area you throw you you, you, you you fly the drone then it gives you the 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 area which is flooded immediately you know the coverage of the of the problem so how do you see yourselves updating these maps um, updating the maps we it's a process which you can't avoid it. Even with the other technology, it used to be the same. Because after taking the aerial photos, we would really need to go and update it. So, but using the community is easier because the community has much more knowledge. The community have much more knowledge of their area, they are conversant with their area, so it, make, it, it takes even more little time to do, to do the updating. Yeah, okay, the, the, this, this map has been putting on the, on the website. If you want to update, you can update. And I've got the knowledge. They teach me how to add other things, the new, new house, the new location, yeah, I can do it. You can do, I can add anything. Yeah. What are the incentives for people to do this? Why would the community update the map? We, daily, the community is growing, day after day. So there is new structure, there is new development, so there are changes, so we need to, to include and exclude those changes. If you exclude something, you need to exclude in the map. If you include something, you have to include the map so that you, have, you must have the, 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 the real picture of the place. Yeah. Cool. And uh, this map is going to help us because Tandale, we don't have the public water system. So using this, we can go to the authority, Dawasco, to ask for them to come, that we have the map. We can use this way to put your, your, your pipes. You can go this way, you put your pipes, so that we can have water. Because we don't have water, Tandale. 
We are using wells. That's why even the, the outbreak of this cholera associated with uh, wells water. Yeah. So using this map, we can collaborate with people of Tawasco to have the public water system. During the, even with floods, the municipal council is engaged fully to deal with the people who are affected by, with floods, but also to identify those houses which are, are being flooded. During the 2012 floods, we, we had to, the Department of Urban Planning was engaged on going to count house after house to identify the, all those flooded houses. And all the flood victims were the subject of the municipal council. So to identify the flood prone areas at the right time, if we have a map to do so, it will be very great to the municipal council.